exist? Are healing miracles real? Is there life after death? Can people get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 25 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Heaven, hell, these are natural things. They're not fantasy, but you decide for yourself. I want to introduce you to my guest, Mary Catherine Baxter, because in April of 1976, at 2 a.m. in the morning, you had a surprise guest. Tell me what happened. Well, I was in prayer and uh, Jesus Christ appeared to me in a human form. There was a brilliant light came into my bedroom and when the light cleared up there stood Jesus. And he said, I've appeared to you for a reason and a purpose that I may take you on a journey and show you the depths, the degrees, the levels and torments of hell. He said it's for the whole world, it's not for a handful of people. And he explained to me how ahead of me would be horrors and sorrows and grief because he would actually talk to some of the dead in hell and I would have to record it. Now when you visited hell was there a point where you experienced what people there are experiencing to a degree? Yes I did. Tell me about that. Sid, I did that twice. It was like the 20th night into hell. I went to hell every night three hours a night for 30 nights. And 30 nights? You must have been wishing this thing was over. Oh, yes, yes. And now, oh. now, we can treat it lightly right now because it's okay. back in 1976. Yeah. However, you do, I've noticed that you really don't even like talking about it that much, do you? No. Uh -uh. Why? Because I rem it bothers me uh, because of people that go to hell. They're lost and there's no more hope for them. Okay, first of all, where is hell located? In the middle of the earth, and it's in the pl shape of a human body, and it's on its back. And there's different levels, different degrees, different fires of torment. Uh, how does someone enter hell? Through a gateway. And there's gateways called tunnels. Like. They're kind of like tunnels or tornadoes, and they spin around and back again in the atmosphere. And they're hooked to the earth. And they call them tunnels, but Jesus calls them gateways to hell. And that's when they die and they rejected God. They actually descend down this gateway into hell. Okay, now back to that original question I okay. asked you about what it feels like to okay. be in hell as a person that uh, is separated from God. Well, it was on the twin, about the 20th night, and the Lord told me, he said, uh, you, um, you may not see me, but I'm here. He said, there's something you have to go through for this revelation, because you've got to know that you know that you know that this is real, like John the Revelator, he said. And when, when he said that, he was gone. I couldn't see him. And an evil presence, an evil demon, they came over and they touched me, and they said, your Jesus has left you. And uh, when they did, it was like a million rays blades went through my body and I was in the spirit form but I had all my senses you know and my body was at home on the bed and I understood everything I, I understood uh, why people were in hell the moans and the screams of the dead and then another demon came up and they said we're going to put you in this compartment and Jesus has left you and they were laughing and mocking and I was put in an area where the fire was racing towards my feet in a jail cell and Sid it burned I could actually feel it burning me and I was in the spirit and it was burning my legs and it was burning up my legs I was screaming and screaming and I said Jesus where are you and I began to quote the word of the Lord and as I did that the demons would scream and they would back up and I'd say the blood of Jesus I'm redeemed I'm saved what am I doing here because it was like I was a lost sinner it really was and, and then now from what you've told me uh, yeah. you were able to feel Oh Pain. yeah, oh my goodness, what, yes. What were you able to smell? The smell of stench, of sewers, smell of burning rotten flesh. The air was so thin you could hardly breathe. Uh, and the, the awful part is the cries of the dead. Uh, the moans and the groans of the regret because they missed Jesus. And demons remind them that they could have had Jesus. They could have been born again and been saved from eternity. 
damnation. Uh, could you tell me one person you spoke with there and what they said? Or that Jesus spoke with and what they said? Jesus spoke to many. But the main one that really was coming to mind was a woman, okay? She used to be a minister of God's Word, okay? And her husband committed adultery. He, he fell from grace. And so he went to her and told him that uh, he had been tempted and did the sin. Would she forgive him? And she told him no. And he went to the pastor and he asked the pastor. They all forgave him and prayed for him because he was tempted of the devil. And the woman got very angry and she said, Here I am preaching God's word and uh, I'm so holy and he's so sinful. But what happened? She quit reading her Bible. She quit praying. And she eventually let Satan in her heart with hatred and malice. And she took a gun and she killed the other woman and she killed her husband mm. and she killed herself. She ended up in hell. And uh, the affair had ended a long time ago, but she had such bitterness said that Jesus spoke to her. He said, you should have lived what you preached. You should have forgiven. You should have uh, understood. That's what Jesus told her. And he said, instead you yielded to the devil and sin entered into your heart. Hatred and sin. That's what he told her. Let me ask you this. When he was escorting you through mm -hmm. hell, mm -hmm. did some of the people try to talk to him? Oh, yeah. And would it, tell me some of that dialogue. Okay, many of them would. And they, would, they were in different nations, okay, different languages. But he understood all of them. And when people go to hell, see it, it, it's a whatever lifetime of sin they committed. If they were liars, they're put with liars. If they were so murdered, there's like categories. Yeah, like in the Galatians, the book of Galatians, the 17 works of the flesh. If they were murderers, they're put with murderers. And as Christ would walk, they would reach their bony hands up because they were skeletons full of dead man's bones. They didn't have hair, flesh, blood, or organs. But they could talk, they could turn, and they would scream and they'd say, put the fires out. Don't let us burn anymore. And they would cry for repentance some, but some would curse the Lord. Some would scream at him and say, why didn't my neighbor warn me? Why didn't they take me to church? And you would hear the cries of the multitude. Is there any reversal? I mean, would, uh, would someone that is committed to hell, can they ever get out of hell? Absolutely not. We'll be back in a moment. This is fascinating because when people die, they go to one of two places. They go to heaven or they go to hell. Mary Catherine Baxter went to both places. So you'll have a little preview of what to expect. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Mary Kay Baxter had an encounter with Jesus the Messiah. He told her, the things you are about to see are a warning. The book you write will save many souls from hell. Call now and receive your copy of Mary Kay Baxter's book, A Divine Revelation of Hell. For a donation of $18, shipping is included. Ask for offer number 1051. This book documents Mary's journey with Jesus as he took her for 30 nights to witness the horror and torment of hell. Then he took her for 10 nights to experience the glory and majesty of heaven. Jesus said he wanted to give her a revelation to prepare the world for his return and to turn many to righteousness. This book will show you how to cause the evil forces to lose ground, how to destroy their hold over you and others, how to break off evil spells. You will learn what will happen on earth during the Great Tribulation, how to share the reality of hell and the glory of heaven with your family and friends, and so much more. Jesus had Mary Baxter write this book so that the whole world would know that hell is real and how you can avoid ever going there. Don't miss out on getting your copy of Mary Kay Baxter's book, A Divine Revelation of Hell. For a donation of $18, shipping is included. Ask for offer number 1051. Or you can write to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1051 or log on to SidRoth.org. This book contains God's warning and call to salvation. Time is running out. Call now or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Mary Catherine Baxter. And Mary Catherine, uh, you had an encounter that uh, Jesus put you through for a reason. You went yes. to hell for 30 nights. Yes. Why did he do this? Uh, for the purpose to win the lost and to let them know and prepare them for the coming of the Lord. Most people don't believe in a literal hell anymore. Oh, I know. Yes. Tell me 
some of the worst things you saw in hell? Uh, some of the worst things. There were two very, very dramatic. There was the vats of fire. There was fire like on the 15th night. The angel of the Lord even was in the presence there, but Jesus was with me. And there was a place where people, souls that just died on earth came, and they were thrown into liquid boiling fire mixed with uh, hot lava. And this was the judgment of God upon the abominables. People that taught false doctrine to people, people that lied and deliberately uh, blaspheme God that knew better and then the other so there's different degrees of punishment yes even. yes and then there was a river that flowed all through the beginning of my journey it was like maybe uh, six feet wide and so deep and flames came up like ten feet and then it was chained together skeletons by the thousands and the Word of God was written in the fires lovers of their own flesh more than God's commandments. Uh, men loving men and women loving women. And all through the were, fire... Were there, just out of curiosity, were there special sections then for people who were lesbians or homosexuals? It was in this area, in the fires. Hmm. They were chained with a black chain, Sid, that they went through the current of fire all through hell. And like 60 to 80 miles an hour. And how painful do you think this well, their, was? Well, their bones were charred red. And they would scream and scream, saying, no man cares for my soul. And they would say, warn, warn the people not to come here. And most of the people in hell would scream that. Tell my family not to come to hell. Tell them to accept the Messiah as their Savior. That's what they would say. They, they cry and no one cares, you know, and they'll curse each other. And it's horrible. And there's another section of the heart of hell that's bad. The heart of hell is for hypocrites and backbiters. Uh, it's a real heart, big as a football field, and it's got snakeskin on it. And it beats like a real heart. And in it is put people that uh, are hypocrites, backbiters, that uh, really hurt the churches, hurt the pastors, even hurt programs that are real like yours. And they get, they get warnings and warnings and warnings on the earth, but they don't stop. Well, the greatest warning in the world is to re repent, repent because right. if they don't repent, mm -hmm. then it's too late. The best thing in the world is for someone to be uh, warned of sin yes. and then repent from that sin. Uh, what we're talking about isn't fantasy. You know, you, you grew up most of your life watching television and, and, and you, you, you just think all these things are fantasy. Mary Catherine Baxter, will you look in the camera and tell people how real hell is? Hell is very, very real. Uh, there's no escape once you get there. There's, uh, you're turned over to your tormentors. Uh, while you're on the earth, you need to repent and turn unto God. But when you're down there, uh, that you cry for mercy. There's no mercy. Those demons in hell are so evil and they will even touch you, like I said before, like thousands of razor blades go through your body. And also there's worms that bore on your bones, and that's out of Ezekiel about the worms. And the, the cries of the dead uh, see it are so awful. They moan, they regret, wishing they'd listen to a preacher, wishing they'd read their Bible, wishing they'd give their life to the Lord Jesus so they wouldn't be in this place. And there's no more hope, no more destiny. And then they know it. They know the minute they descend in this gateway down to hell that they miss God. And they became, like one preacher said, they become a believer. They believe in the Bible. Mm. Mm -hmm. well, tell me some real people that you heard their story. Okay, there was quite a few talking to Jesus. They always talked to Jesus. And there was a man, really, he was really tall. His skeleton was tall and he had a bank believe Bible in his hand. It was on fire. And he was preaching the word of the Lord in hell and demons were stabbing him. They tell telling him to shut up that Satan was their God and all that. And I began to listen to him and I turned to Jesus. And Jesus was in the human form, Sid, by the way. He was always in the human form. He actually cried in hell. Tears would come down his face. And because from my understanding, you're reading scripture, hell was not designed for humans. That's right. It was right. designed for demons and the devil. That's right. Uh, and so you're saying that, and you know, they, they say God can do anything, but once someone has ended up in hell, 
he can't get them out. Well, that's why Christ was crying. He said, I shed my blood that they would not come here. And, and you know, God is a righteous God, and he has to judge righteously. It's, so it, what did you hear them say? They said, uh, they were talking, this man was talking, okay, preaching. And Christ said to him, peace be still, O man. And he turned his whole carcass towards the Lord, and he said, Lord, I repent now to you. I'll do the right thing now, Lord, if you'll just let me. He called him Lord out of hell and give me back my body. He said, I know you can do this. He said, I won't be prejudiced anymore. He said, I won't lie anymore. He said, I won't steal from the church anymore. And he said, I was a preacher of your word. And sin entered into my heart, and I yield my life to the devil, and I compromised. He said, I compromised you, and I did wicked things. And he said, Lord, I've been here many years, and I cannot die. He was very, and he was judged, you know, burning in hell. Tell me another person. Okay, there was another person. Uh, there was like on one side of the belly of hell, you know, belly of hell was three miles around, 17 miles high. There was a whole uh, a bunch of people back over there moaning and groaning and screaming, their skeletons. And one man in particular was screaming. And we went over to him and Christ said, peace be still. He was in hell and he, he had a skeleton for him. He had real blood on his hands. And Jesus said, the blood of many is upon your hands. Because he used to serve the Lord. And he used to teach about the Holy Spirit. He had the Holy Spirit. And then... Uh, he quit teaching, and the Holy Spirit left him, and he, he, because of his sin, said, the man began to sin against God, serving God. He was serving God. That's in Ezekiel, you know, the righteous. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you see the sword coming, you have to warn the people. But he wouldn't do that. He would compromise. He wanted money more than God's commandments. And he told God. They talked to him, and Jesus talked. And he said that when you begin to open seminars against the Holy Spirit is when the judgment come upon you. He said if you judged yourself, you would not be here if you had repented. It's always about repentance. The good news is you're still alive and you can decide where you're going to spend forever. Don't go away. I want to find about her 10-day trip to heaven. We'll That's be right good. Back. That's what I like to talk about. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Sid Roth has found the key to worldwide revival. This is God's time to reach the Jewish people with his love. Messiah Jesus has torn down the wall dividing Jew and Gentile. The two together form one new man to reach the world. God's method to reach the Jewish people is through signs and wonders. This is why our website, SidRoth.org, is jam-packed with tools to equip you to move in signs and wonders. Understand Israel and the Jewish roots of the church. Log on to SidRoth.org today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Mary Catherine Baxter, and we're talking about her 30 nights. Each night, Jesus took her on a guided tour of hell. And one of the things I find fascinating is the whole subject about the blood of Messiah. But this was brought up in hell. Tell me about it. Jesus would stress about his blood to these, these souls that was lost. He would say, if you'd only believe the gospel, if you'd only believe that my blood was shed to wash away any sin you ever committed, I would have done it if you'd only repented and called upon me. He stressed that all through hell. And uh, he means just what he says, that it was his blood that was shed on Calvary. If we would believe that he's the Son of God, that he came to wash away our sins, and he would stress that. He said, you wouldn't be in hell if you'd only believe. Tell me, it, it, unfortunately, most people that have not uh, ended their life that are listening to me right now don't understand how powerful the blood of the King Hallelujah. of the Jews, the Messiah of Israel, is Yeshua, Jesus, the Hallelujah. Messiah. And you that are mocking right now, you're not going to get the last laugh. You're not going to. Don't you mock. Mary Catherine Baxter, tell me an exact example of when you have pleaded the blood or, or tell me something about the blood of Jesus. Um, I was praying for this person uh, that was choking, actually choking, and I went and laid hands upon him, began to plead the blood of Jesus, and I believe in the covenant of Jesus Christ.
as we began to pray all of that immediately left because it was a spirit that had attacked them and another when the child had a high fever we covered him with prayer and the blood of Jesus and the spirit of the, the power of God came on me and I rebuked it and it instantly broke through the blood of Jesus if we could just see in the invisible world yes. that when we plead the blood it actually it's happens everything that the yes. blood ha has accomplished when you say it actually yes. happens what do you mean okay we was in a, a church Sit where angels were standing as we were praying, excuse me, singing the song, The Bloodline. As we seen it, I seen a line, an angel standing and holding a large line of the blood. It was called the bloodline, all around the church, all around the people. And at times when we plead the blood, I actually see a shield of red come down over that person. And they begin to get healed, they begin to get delivered. And if there's a cancer in their body, sometimes God lets me see it. The red goes on the dark spot and burns out the cancer. Now, I promised you we'd find out about heaven. So for yes. 30 nights she went to hell, but the next 10 nights she went to heaven. I have to ask you a question. Okay. Uh, do young people stay young, like little infants, when they get to heaven, or do they grow up? They grow up. Give me an example. Okay. Well, uh, children grow up in heaven to the age of maturity. They're called the in innocent. Okay. And the other scripture would see it is when uh, suffer the little children to come unto me for such is the kingdom of God. And they go to school in heaven. They're taught by the redeemed and they're taught by Did angels. Did you see any children in heaven? Oh yeah. That I saw families. Knew, that you knew? No, I didn't know them, but I saw many children. Okay. What about... Uh, Adults do they, they are say ninety when they die and go to heaven? Do they are they kind of decrepit? Are they walking oh, no. around with canes? Oh or? no! See, God gives them a glorified body, a brand new body, and they usually look about thirty three years old. If they die a hundred, when the angels get done with them and take them before God, they're they they're, they look thirty three years old. What was the music like at heaven? Uh, it was different praises, different types of uh, levels of music. There was uh, a piano 40 feet across. There was a, a trumpet 35 feet long. And different types, different uh, types of music now. Like we had the Italian band in the Bible. They actually, I saw a, a, a people dancing and spinning to the, uh, the sound like Italian music. There was Jewish music too in heaven, all kinds of music. Really? Yes. Okay. We, well, uh, 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 let what? me ask you this. Yeah. You saw and vision, and where you, when you went to heaven, these books yes. that were accumulated in this golden room. Tell yes. me about that. Well, okay, there's archives in heaven, rooms that, uh, of books. Okay, the first, I've seen several rooms, but one room in particular I feel like Sharon was where God has books he wants to bring down and give people to write books from heaven hmm. yes he wants to give them revelation knowledge and then there was other books of prophecies there was books well, of prayer well that reminds prayer. me of someone I interviewed that heard songs in heaven and then many years later heard those same songs being released for the first time on earth yes so because, you're saying with books it's the same way they're books yes. to be released from heaven uh, yes and there's also anointing oils to be released what does that mean uh, is there's like vials of oil up there in a certain for room for healing and miracles it's for yeah, and certain ministers too. God will send the angels to anoint us more sometimes. Oh, but you were telling me in some of these books they had records of the prayers. Yes, and, and prophecies. And also there was a group of angels that God sends, and he calls them the Northern Army. And I said they're very big, big angels, 30 foot high. They have huge wings. They have a face like you wouldn't believe of determination. And they have a sword on their side bigger than a man with flames comes out of it. Their stallions that they're on are so high and four foot across in the back. When the prayers of the saints come up to God, they come in, the, they go to the record room, then they come before the throne. The Lord opens up the prayer book and smoke comes out of it and perfume. And the Lord speaks and his voice is like many waters. He tells them, go to earth and answer her prayers. Go to earth and answer her prayer. And when the book is open, the pages come out and go in the writer's hands. And they gallop to earth to answer our prayers. They do warfare for us. You, you know, I wish I had seen heaven while I'm oh, still I here. I love to heaven. And I don't want to see hell ever, <laughs> but in a way I almost feel I want to because I want to have that same compassion you have. When you see someone that rejects Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, what do you feel? 
it hurts. Uh, but most, I will tell you the truth, Sid, most places I go, everywhere I go, they, they hear the story and they want to be saved. They want Christ in their heart. And once you get to talk to, really talk, their little hearts just melt. Because they really don't, don't want to go to this place. So I rarely meet anybody that doesn't want to be saved. Rare. What about you? The Jewish prophet Daniel says in the 12th chapter of the book of Daniel, those that are buried in the dust, some shall rise to everlasting life. Mary Catherine, that's the heaven. Right. <laughs> that is that's heaven. heaven. Yeah. Everlasting yes. means no chance of reversal. Some wow. shall rise to everlasting life and some to everlasting condemnation. Yes. So, in effect, once someone dies, they can't change their mind because of that word everlasting that is there. So, some people say, huh, this earth right here, this is hell. No. If you think this were earth is hell compared to hell, this earth is heaven. Would you agree, Mary Catherine? I agree. So yes. choose. Because you don't know when your end's going to come. Choose right now. Everlasting life or everlasting condemnation. Heaven or hell. Life with God. Life separated from God. Forever. The only chance of reversal is now. Why do I say now? Because you don't know how long you're going to live. Choose life. Why will you die, O house of Israel? Believe that Jesus died in your place for your sins. Ask him to forgive you and then make him your Lord by saying, Jesus, I make you my Lord. Or Jesus, help. That'll do Mary Kay Baxter had an encounter with Jesus the Messiah. He told her, the things you are about to see are a warning. The book you write will save many souls from hell. Call now and receive your copy of Mary Kay Baxter's book, A Divine Revelation of Hell. For a donation of $18, shipping is included. Ask for offer number 1051. This book documents Mary's journey with Jesus as he took her for 30 nights to witness the horror and torment of hell. Then he took her for 10 nights to experience the glory and majesty of heaven. Jesus said he wanted to give her a revelation to prepare the world for his return and to turn many to righteousness. This book will show you how to cause the evil forces to lose ground, how to destroy their hold over you and others, how to break off evil spells. You will learn what will happen on earth during the Great Tribulation, how to share the reality of hell and the glory of heaven with your family and friends, and so much more. Jesus had Mary Baxter write this book so that the whole world would know that hell is real and how you can avoid ever going there. Don't miss out on getting your copy of Mary Kay Baxter's book, A Divine Revelation of Hell. For a donation of $18, shipping is included. Ask for offer number 1051. Or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1051 or log on to SidRoth.org. This book contains God's warning and call to salvation. Time is running out. Call now or write today. If you're encouraged and helped by these television programs, please consider assisting us with future productions. Send your tax-deductible gift to Sid Roth, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia, 31521. Call toll-free at 1-800-548-1918. Hope for them. Okay, first of all, where is hell located? In the middle of the earth, and it's in the shape of a human body, and it's on its back. And there's different levels, different degrees, different fires of torment. Uh, how does someone enter hell? Through a gateway. And there's gateways called tunnels. Right. They're kind of like tunnels or tornadoes, and they spin around and back again in the atmosphere. And they're hooked to the earth. And they call them tunnels, but Jesus calls them gateways to hell. And that's when they die and they rejected God. Natural. Heaven, hell, these are natural things. They're not fantasy. But you decide for yourself. I want to introduce you to my guest, Mary Catherine Baxter. 
because in April of 1976, at 2 a.m. in the morning, you had a surprise guest. Tell me what happened. Well, I was in prayer and uh, Jesus Christ appeared to me in a human form. There was a brilliant light came into my bedroom and when the light cleared up there stood Jesus. And he said... Do angels exist? Are healing miracles real? Is there life after death? Can people get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 25 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. I did. Tell me about that. Sid, I did that twice. It was like the 20th night into hell. I went to hell every night, three hours a night for 30 nights. And 30 nights? You must have been wishing this thing was over. Oh, yes, yes. And now, oh, now we can treat it lightly right now because it's okay. back in 1976. Yeah. However, you do, I've noticed that you really don't even like talking about it that much, do you? No. Uh -uh. Why? Because I rem it bothers me uh, because of people that go to hell, they're lost, and there's no more. I have appeared to you for a reason and a purpose, that I may take you on a journey and show you the depths, the degrees, the levels and torments of hell. He said it's for the whole world, it's not for a handful of people, and he explained to me how ahead of me would be horrors and sorrows and grief, because he would actually talk to some of the dead in hell, and I would have to record it. Now, when you visited hell, was there a point where you experienced what people there are experiencing to a degree? Yes, 